Shut up and sit down. Right. <clears throat> what have we done? Right. Been round. Taped the sides of the fuselage together so that we can get ready to start moving this landing gear and what I've got just so that you can see it let's draw along the edges of the wing where it's going to sit I can see it by eye but you guys probably can't pick this up due to white noise or whatever you want to call it so let's just quickly Roughly it's going to go like so, okay? This was originally here. I need it so that this edge lines up with that edge, front of the wings. So it's coming right away forward to about there, like that, okay? Right to the leading edge of the wings, actually. I'll put them lines in the wrong spot. It's actually about there. Like that. Okay. And then I've measured with my ruler the distance between that edge and that line, which is four and a half. Come along four and a half, draw my lines out to mirror these, sectioned across, and I know that the landing gear is going to end up about there. Okay. Now for the, the step that normally puts everyone off. Yeah. You've you got a choice here. You can faff about, you can worry about it, or you can do what I do, just pick up your saw, put it on your line, take a breath, and just start cutting. Because if you think about it too much, you're not going to do it. Okay? So you saw him through, to the edge of that line through the nose section. Don't need too much pressure on these saws, they do the job like that. And that is a line. Like I said, if you think about it too much, you're not going to do it. Now, this is a, a real git to try and do these lines, but They can be done. I'll start that one like that. And what you've got to realise is I'm trying to wrestle this on a bench, so it is a bit difficult. I'd normally cut this quite close to me, but once I can find somewhere comfortable to rest it, I'll be all right. I don't know whether you're picking this up. What I'm going to do is move the camera out slightly to see whether you're picking this up. That's where I am. So let's see where I can wedge that up in there. There you go. And then my paint rack will come in handy for summer. And then I'm using my thumb as a guide. And I'm just cutting along that line. Just scoring gently with the saw blade at first. a lot of people out there that will probably be scared of doing this so I'm hoping that seeing someone do it might be enough to make you feel comfortable doing it yourselves let's try and not put too much pressure on the blade because I don't want to bend it I've gone through so many of these through being a bit heavy handed Feel it biting in there. Oh, yeah, we're through quite a bit of it. There 
is quite scary, but once you're through, you're through. And then I'll just gently come along now, bit by bit, with the saw blade to where I need to go. Mike will be watching there's Mike Mountain who I'm building this for and he'll be probably peeking through his fingers at this stage going oh no he's taken a saw to a brand new 130 170 second scale Concord bloke's mad but I'm pretty lucky I've been modifying kits now for the last decade so, you know, my bus build will prove that, you know, I butchered the bejesus out of that kit. Just wide wires. So I'm not afraid of it now. It's like anything, think it through before you do it. Once you've done that, you've, you've won half the battle. That little line there, and then that will leave me probably to there. Done. How about that? I think that, my friends, is kit bashing. Scary, isn't it? Right. Hey. We've taken that whole section out, and then that whole section is going to come back the way and glue up in there. I'm then going to notch out for this piece out of there, and then that piece is going to go in there. Like so. Sorry about that, it was a knock at the door. Right, so anyway, where were we? Kit bashing, that was it. See, so you've taken that section out of there. Like so. It's going to go up there. Like so. And then that is going to go in there. Like that. Come underneath. Like. Oh, really? So, for the front wheel, come on Vesta, you can do this, like that, I'm going to have to hold it in place peeps, I'm very sorry, like that, does that look okay, and the landing gear now has been moved forward, just like that. A little bit of sanding required just to see and smooth everything up. But that, my friends, is how you kit bash. Yeah, see you in a minute. Right, Concord time. <coughs> what have we been up there? Spray the inside black and put in a thin sheet of clear transparent plastic and used a bit of clear fits to uh, glue that in place. Clear fix in case you wonder. Humbro clear fix. Really gloopy stuff but sticks it in nicely. And then what that gives you is that gives you some nice windows. Just got to sand the rest of the clear fix off 
on that half. Uh, we've started to feed wires through the wings. Okay, what I've done is I've attached the stand and then the little ball that goes in the stand that goes in here I've actually drilled a hole through it that comes up through the centre section for all my wires okay so this is for the navigation lights this is one of the power leads I'll also have a triple five timer circuit board in the stand that controls all of the uh, navigation lights it's either going to go in the stand or I might just tuck it in there I haven't decided yet okay so that's what that all is and I used some clear fix to put in the cockpit glass and the cockpit's gone in a couple of yellow LEDs I've popped in and then I've started tracing all my wiring through the LEDs okay and this is a resistor on each LED solder it connect your plus lead to the resistor and your negative lead to the spare all the way along in a daisy chain and then the wire is going to come out of this section here to meet up with the wiring from the front and then I've got a bulkhead to make to go in here and then I'll have another cable going up all the way to the tip of the tail for the rear strobe light which will connect to the triple five timer so that's what I'm up to all I've got to do is just connect wires to this and solder it okay now there are soldering tutorials online and also I've covered it quite a lot in previous videos so I'm not actually going to keep that in this video I shall do that off camera because obviously where it's such a bulky kit you're not going to see a lot on screen and that will sort that out okay the landing gear repositioned has been glued in on one side and I've started to sand where I moved the panel in the previous video just so that I could start tracing the LEDs and getting everything in place okay so when we come back this will all be soldered would have had time to uh, sort itself out and then I'll connect it up to power and show you how I test it all okay see you in a moment hello gang right Radio peeps, playing with the wings on Concord, as you can see. I've got an engine lined up because I've LED lit that, so I'm running my wires through the wings at the moment. I've got a lighting kit installed, which is a Beacons lighting kit from Raven Scale Models. Pretty much everything you need in there, I'm just having to modify the kit slightly to get things where I want them which I'll go into in more detail once I start putting the wires actually in place. I've reached a bit of a stumbling block now because I've got to run the nav LEDs into the wings. So I've got to do a bit of chopping. Okay. Dremel, and I'm going to carve out the groove in the wings. So that's what I'm going to be doing today. difficult thinking about it, just go straight in.
as I was saying, it can be a bit difficult when you overthink chopping your kit, but just go ahead and do it. Okay, and I should then be able to recess this light in to where I want it to go, and then I'll use a bit of clear fix to uh, fill anything that I need to in the wing. So there's just a tiny bit more to come out of there. adjustments that I need to when I uh, put the wing in place. So we're going about there. See? So straight away my light bulb is pretty much where I want it to be. Okay and then I've got to grind out the same um, channel in this section just to thin this down a little. So that's what I'm going to be doing, just to get this set orders to where we need it to be. So let's quickly mark that up. To where I want it to go. So, <clears throat> so now I'm done with that half, I then do the same on this, take out the section. to go too deep because you can always refill with a bit of sprue goo so if you do make a boo-boo it's not the end of the world but I'm specific about how I need that piece to go in and as you can see let's drop that in pretty much where I need it to be it's just a tiny little bit more thinning So it is, you know, trial and error. And rather than go too mad with a Dremel now, I'll thin it with a bit of uh, a sanding stick. Just so that I've got a bit more control over what I'm taking off. taking out a nice big chunk of wing on here. Yeah, that was the right stick. Right. And that's 
thinned that down really quite well. I'm just going to put that on a very slow, slow speed and just... Gently go over it. we're going to get it in there. I might be able to take a piece out of there just to make the back end sit a little better. sits where I want it to sit. Just like that. Nice and tight. Okay. And then I can infill the rest of this with a bit of sprue goo. Get it in place and clamp that right in nice and tight. And that will bring that wing as I want it. And then I've got the same to do the other side. Okay, so I should do the other side off camera and then we'll be ready then to place these LEDs in their final resting position. Okay, so when we come back I'll have them both in place and be ready to glue that section in. Alright, <coughs> a little bit more work on the Concorde. I've done one side and run wires and all of that lot, so I'll dig out my pointy stick. I'll go through some of what I've got done. Uh, you'll notice a little orange wire coming through. Well, that goes over to the little green navigation light tucked in the wing over there. And there's also wires going to the engine, which on this side you can see just pop out the wing. And they go to four LEDs that are in the afterburners. I'm at the stage now where I can put this wing flat on. Now, what I did is using a Dremel I made a groove in the panel just to accept this LED and also I've made a notch in the wing just there okay so that when this folds down it traps the LED in place and then with the wing pressed in and glued all I'm left to do then is a bit of sprue go and uh, clear fix just to make a little lens. So I'm at that stage now where I can glue this wing in. So I'm going to use some of the uh, Tamiya gloopy stuff along the edge there just to get it to bite in place. Just want it to accept the panel and give it its initial stick and then I can go around it again with some extra fin as I need to but the key at the moment is getting this little wing panel to join together in such a way that it stays as I want it to stay so I'll just get some clamps on it really 
give that a pinch grip in there. And send a couple along this little edge here. Just to get that to bed down where I want it. Again, you know, you can go around and fill any little scenes that have appeared after the effect. And then I'm just going to run a bit of extra thin along this scene. Most of this scene gets hidden by the engine. Okay. with because I might as well start to put the engine on which is a little bit of a challenge but it does go super duper extra thin quick set just to start getting this to bite into position and I do it in stages I get the first stage in then I put this, the front part in and hold that whilst that starts to bond and then that just leaves the front section to pinch down once the back is bitten which it will do just needs persuading Just a tiny little gap, but that will pull down like so. Because once this is all beginning to take shape and, and bite, I can then go round and sand and do what else I need to do to get this to conform to exactly what I want. Shape wires. And that's the beauty of these extra thin glues, is they are a welding cement. So they melt plastic for you. a little bit of pressure on the part. Just put that on the table. And then I'll just put a bit of firm hand pressure on there. Just start getting the corners in. Just like that. And that will be that engine then attached and I can leave it to dry 
because I've put obviously the wing panel together and the engine on. And the thing you'll find with this kit is where there are some fit issues. You know, just build it in stages and let it set. You know, come back to it later. There's no hurry. You know, I've, I've been doing sections on this for over a week. You know, and I just leave it on the side. Let everything do its thing. And then I come back to it. Spend an hour or so on it. Put it down. And go off and do something else. Just so that we can get it to where we need it to be. Maybe that engine's bit already. Okay. So we're happy with that. Yeah, we're sitting uh, reasonably square. I've just got a couple of little spacers that I need to put on that go between the engine and the wing. And then I've got a aileron to go in there. I've also put a light right up in the side there, little nav light. So I've got to do a bit of more sanding on there. There's a bit of sprue goo in there at the moment. But we're we're basically building the sub assemblies. Now these wires will go down the stand to a little circuit board underneath, and then they come up through into my nav kit. Okay, and we've this is a Beacons lighting kit from Raven Scale Models. Uh, you've got a microcontroller in there. All your your wires go into your different lights. Now I was going to make my own lighting kit for this. I've got all the stuff to do it, but I've got triple five timers, and these run on a 12 F609 microcontroller. They come pre-programmed and. Although I've got Arduino and things like that for time, I had a spare lighting kit sat in Ed Force One. When I built Ed Force One, I run fiber optic through the wings and I stupidly used super glue to glue the fiber optic in place and it ate through it. So when Ed Force One was actually lit, several of the lights weren't emitting light and I thought it was a waste of a, a 20 pound lighting kit through a simple mistake so I pulled it out of Ed Force One and I've shoved it in Concord and obviously not used CA glue, super glue or anything like that to glue it in, I'm just using clear fix. So yeah, that's why I've used that lighting kit. I had it spare. Um, yeah, it was pointless keeping a kit in a plane that I had made a mistake on in the build. Yes, I do make mistakes. And I thought, well, I'll put it to good use in this Concord. So that's why I shelved my idea of building my own circuit board, but I'll do one for the A380 anyway. So that's uh, power connections that I've got to connect to the stuff in the fuselage. There's the light in underneath there. These two wires that power all the cabin lights and everything will then connect to the two poking up there, thus transmitting power all around the airplane. <clears throat> I've got this little bulb here that's going to feed right down to the towel cone as well. So five to one on, I glue the plane together and forget that one. I just got this feeling that's what I'm going to do, so yeah. When I do it, I'll uh, do it on the bench and uh, yeah. Hopefully I don't forget. So that's what we got to do to join everything together. Uh, these tiny little spaces that will go in here. Now these are a very tight fit. So I tend to file these down just to thin them down a bit as they go through the ailerons. Okay, so that's another little thing I'll do. I can't do anything else at the moment because I want that to dry thoroughly before I start throwing the wing about and doing my thing. Because knowing my luck it will fall off and keep faffing about. And yeah. Yeah, 
we know. Let's just put a bit of extra thin down that seam there. want you to bite a little bit better because you don't look as if you're biting very well. So you're going to mess me around. Make sure I ain't got a pot of extra thin near me. Okay. There end of the lesson, Concord. You will comply. Oh, but it really is taking shape. Ignore the rather badly put on Mr. Surfacer. It's all got to be gone round with sanding sticks and everything once I've got the wings and the fuselage assembled. It'll be far easier for me to tackle the sanding all at once. The lipstick and mascara. And then we can get this bad boy in the paint. <gasps> he says right in the middle of winter when he can't get outside to do any painting. But... I'm sure I'll figure out a way because this isn't going to fit in my spray booth. I know that for a fact. I'm going to pause and let that set. Um, off shot, I've got the stand already assembled with a tracer wire inside. Tracer wire I tape to the main wire of the kit and then I'll pull that through the stand comes out the bottom then my circuit boards are going to live here with a couple of switches that will control everything I need to be controlled on the plane. So I'm going to quickly pause, we'll come back, that will be dry, we can put the other railer on in um, and start notching out the front light and ba -bam, ba -bam, put in the spacers and then we can go around and just start filling in any little imperfections on that and then that will be the wing assembly done then and then we can start bringing this kit together so I'll see you in a moment <laughs> 